All right, this is the last part, and it's actually more of an audience participation. And uh... <laughs> all right, everybody has a phone, so now it's your time to uh, uh, to vote. You know, I think everybody loves voting. Oy, oy. Sorry. Yeah. So you heard quite a bit about large language model yesterday, today, and uh, all the amazing things the various folks are working on. And so the question for this is, uh, what features or use cases should the I2B2 community focus on in 2025 using large language model? I emphasize the word community, you know, whether it's a research effort that you're doing or additional development or the areas that you think that uh, we should do some work in this area. And uh, so you can scan the barcode um, and, uh, or if you want just uh, type, in the, uh, type in the URL, it looks like everybody got the barcode. Got the URL. All right, I'll just uh, stay up there. Now the feature, this particular poll, polling uh, service is interesting. You don't have to enter a new idea. You could certainly do that, but you could also vote on the other people's idea as well. So I know some people like to, yeah, let's see what other people come up with and I'm just gonna vote up or vote down and, uh, and then it will be much easier and uh, especially and if you, you know, we certainly don't want to see 200 ideas, you know, it's much easier if there's a way to vote on other people's idea and then we can see what serves, uh, what kind of a surface to the top. All right, I'll give it a, another maybe a 15 seconds or 30 seconds actually. 30 seconds, you can uh, look at different things and uh, see what you like to uh, vote on. <clears throat> I'm uh, monitoring on my phone as well. You can use the word like a new uh, choice to look at what's new and also what's top. And this is something that uh, you can look at. And you decide to agree to it, not agree to it. Everything is anonymous. And uh, so feel free to, you might just say, I want to order better lunch, you know, if that's what you want. I know Dave liked that one. <laughs> Still coming in, excellent, all right. A better lunch, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was a nice prompt. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm gonna switch to the live view and uh, just so that you can see uh, what is happening. I found this very interesting, you know, and uh, it's uh, audience participation, hopefully uh, there are some folks who are remote that can also vote in as well. And uh, just uh, refresh one more time. And it's interesting, this might help us to, you know, in the next segment before five o'clock to maybe have some discussion about it. Yeah. And just uh, refresh one last time. No more food choices. Okay, that's good. Mike Mendes, you are the one that's being called out, which is good. I always like what you're doing. Yeah, especially the Boston accent one. That was so funny. I'm gonna tell my kids about it. Yeah. All right, everybody voted. Change your vote, down vote, up vote. So this is the result. The top item is uh, ETL, 16 votes and uh, 11, assisting, assist in searching ontology, which is great. I think, uh, you know, certainly what Victor did, and Mike, what you did, and this is fantastic. Uh, the third one is increasing phenotyping 
clinical accuracy. We should probably try to discuss what that means. A chart review, of course, the fifth one is beer, followed by chart review, ontology search, dinner, intuitive queries, queries, reviewing EHR records, chart review, hopefully that's what it means, automate data quality reports, query performance, query information, digital twins, more common data models, lunch, and uh, Mike Mendes features, use cases, enact member accomplishments, excellent. All right, one more response. Let's see what that one is gonna change anything. No, I don't think so. So ETL, uh, I think uh, ontology, phenotyping, chart review, this seems to be the common theme. So I think that's it for my part, just facilitate this uh, discussion. If you guys wanna talk you know, in the next, I know who will be the facilitator for the next segment. Right. Thank you, Chi. So, Diane, do you want to take us into this? What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite Jeff, Griffin, and Sean to, to just come on up and kind of open it up for a discussion. Any last minute, anything you want to ask these guys? I have a question for Sean. All right. Oh, good. All right, so um, of course we saw, we saw a lot of really cool LLM demos this year. We also saw cool LLM demos a year ago. We still don't have LLM in 1.8.1 ITV2. So my question is, which do you think is going to be the first thing that actually gets into ITV2? What um, area of all these different LLM directions is sort of most robust or might be something that other institutions will be installing first? I think it's going to be the ontology selection. I mean, it's hard anyway, and um, it seems to be a good uh, bright spot for LLMs. So I think that's and and it doesn't, you know, it, it, it can't, it won't get it wrong. It'll get, you know, it'll it's it can it's assistive without like you know, um, if it makes an error, just being wrong or you know, it just it just. And so um, it seems like the most uh, best candidate to be integrated early. And then um, probably uh, after that, and, and, and riding very much on the coattails of that would be ETL, I think, because ETL is just so useful. Um, even though it can make a lot of errors, it's not as... Uh, you know, uh, forgiving as as ontology search, but I think that it, um, but it's just so important that I think that'll be the next. Could, could the ontology yeah. has to take five steps to the right. Oh, right, that's good. Idea. You guys, go. you can also use that. Way. Since since ontology search doesn't involve any patients or actual data, could there be a centrally hosted API which is an LM based search of the ACT ontology, where an ITB to install that aside, the ontology cell could go and query the API. It comes back with paths that the ontology cell then manages sort of the normal way. So that you set up centrally and you get it all working and you can prove it over time, um, but it's being called as a remote service by sites. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good, that's a really good application of like a, a GPT-4 for uh, ontology and then an API that uh, would be centrally based. But like you said, of course, it would just need to be hosted by someone or something. Yes. That's the important one. Centrally host that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But that would be, yeah. I mean, because setting up some of these things is really like hard. We need an enclave. Yeah, like an enclave. Yeah. <laughs> Ask, 
ask who. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it, you know, there, here's another uh, LLM thing. Um, documentation. So I think, you know, a project could be we load all the I2B2 documentation into a RAG model and then make it easier, you know, to find stuff. And it could even use the documentation for other tasks, like it could make a plan for you. Like, I've got Ubuntu, what's the plan, right, for installing I2B2? And then have it come up with your plan. Because it's always a little different depending on your circumstances and like, you know, what server you have and um, all that kind of thing. So that would, be, that would be something. If nothing else, it can at least point to you where in the documentation it says something about that because that's um, sometimes the hardest thing to find. And, um, and then the, 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 the best part of it would be that we could like get started right away and we wouldn't have to like, you know, go in there and make a big project out of it, which would be really hard. So, Sean, I've always hated our documentation. It's always been like on the list. Everybody, yeah. you know, it's really, it's it, nobody has great documentation. Is there somebody in the community that might want to like be part of that? Help us out? Or, Arkansas. How about Zach? <laughs> <laughs> You've asked a lot of questions. He, that's the kind of person I like. Yeah, yeah. He raises his hand and he, you know. That's the optimism that we need in I2B2. And we give you assignments. <laughs> so the, the, the um, I'm sure, you, I'm sure you, you, you struggled with the documentation for I2B2 as you. There uh, was some, yeah. So we were thinking, what if we put that into like a big vector database and made a RAG model out of it? And that way we could look it up by just like typing in, you know, I want to know how to install this on Ubuntu or something like that. So that sounds good. There's one thing that I was thinking about that is it's your call for like nine hours. That, that, that is absolutely 100% true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Right, right. So one thing you might be able to do is then just use it as a lookup mechanism, not as a organizing mechanism for you. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you have an agent follow the steps and try to do an install, see if it fails? I wonder if it could, actually. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. It's either going to find it or it's not. Uh, right. Well, if you ask questions based on RAG, it will sometimes get it wrong. But if you ask it to find you the doc, you know, the, the page in the documentation which says how to do X, then yeah. Uh, he said he suggested uh, you could have all the agents. It would have to agree on where it's located, so the person doesn't have to like. So you can get that. Name. That's very interesting. That sounds very interesting. That's that. You can have kind of a crew of multi agent existence where if you could uh, essentially have multiple agents conform to an idea or at least a plan, and that kind of agreement could um, indicate confidence uh -huh. of in a certain idea. Yeah, I see. Yeah, especially if they're like trained differently and then they still agreed, which is kind of what we do as humans, right? All the different representatives get together and if they can agree on one thing, I guess that's a good thing to do, but, but they never do, so. But yeah, that's a really good, that's, I, I like that a lot. Trying to think of some other pain points that we have. Yes, yes, Dave. What's holding you 
if you had if you had x number or more gpus what are some of the constraints or it doesn't have to be gpus but just kind of think big a year from now are the things that are holding you back on technology uh well so the number one thing i would think would so i think there's there's maybe i don't know i'll, I'll list my top three and then i can i'll just go to the, the, the different uh, so um I think the, 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 we need to think of the assistance that we can provide for um, getting computed phenotypes uh, as distributed as possible. I think that's probably our, the number one mission that we have. It ties into the digital twin and it ties into the mission of I2B2 overall. And that, I do think will require a level of uh, uh, being able to put together the uh, uh, embeddings that uh, Comap uh, produces. So I think that's doing that in kind of a, a federated learning way is going to be important. Um, I think the second thing will be we are going to have to, I think, validate the computed phenotypes using some kind of chart review everywhere. And so making it so that the chart review can occur um, in um, automatically using large language models uh, will be a game changer because then we can just let it go on a notes repository and we can have it validate, you know, thousands of different um, uh, calculations at each site that will provide uh, feedback to the embeddings and then that will provide a better system so that's just you know that because that's unfortunately going to be a bottleneck otherwise and then third I'm going to say is just the simple task of really honing down on the API that Griffin was just suggesting to do the ontology search just as a central resource, just get that API just really streamlined so that um, you know it, it works. And and so all three of those things would really support you know people's locals I, local I two B twos, as well as put together you know an indispensable resource of you know the embeddings globally that we could then rely upon to have a really uh, uh, breakthrough in um, computed phenotypes and be able to support those. That's, that's great. Very thoughtful answer, Griffin. <laughs> yeah, the, the one thing that the LLMs nailed today was a uh, heart attack is myocardial infarction. And uh, that seems like it's a very simple kind of thing that we should be able to, um, to, to get working. So you know, that would be, um, be one of the things for me. The, uh, you know, the LLMs for assisted chart review, um, the LMs don't have to work that well, you know, for the thousand phenotypes that are generated. Um, you kind of just need to know roughly: is this a good one or is this not a good one? So, you know, if the LMs are working most of the time, it's going to be good enough for that. When I had just have two nurses do th review the same patient charts, they don't agree a lot of the times on it. But you get an overall sense after they've done a couple dozen of them if this is a phenotype that you should include or not include. The challenge is um, getting to the notes and getting the hardware and the notes put together in a secure way. The hospitals can do, so that's a, that's a separate problem. But um, LM should be able to, if they had access to the clinical notes, people go through these very quickly and be able to validate the thousand phenotypes so that you're not guessing what they are, you know what the actual accuracies are of these and can use them in a more scientific way in the queries. That's great. Agree with all that, of course. Um, I think from an I2B2 feature perspective, if we can uh, really enable uh, agile analytics uh, with multi-site research, I think that really enhancing the data export feature and doing the kinds of things and like enact sites that we've been, that Griffin was able to allow us to do in 4CE with his 
or CE data model. I think from a, a boring ITP2 feature perspective, that's the most important thing. I think from a, a more exciting, what am I excited about perspective, I think um, ETL through LLMs is, is really going to be a, a powerful thing to bring new data into I2B2. And it really highlights the strength of I2B2 that you can ingest almost any patient-centric data, not just coded values. Thank you. From a I2B2 community, because I'm not going to talk about technical things because we've got the experts here, but from a community standpoint, you know, how do we how do we reach out to the community in a in a better way? How do we, you know, we have working groups, a few of them are active. Um, we have a we used to have a monthly community call, but there wasn't a lot of participation, so we changed it to bi-monthly and it's still you know, it's still difficult. Everybody has day jobs. Everybody's really busy, but everybody has unbelievable things that they're they've done within I two B two, and like sharing that with the community. How do how do we do that? How do we reach out to the the group? Um, you know, we got we had four hundred and seventy seven people register for this conference. Okay, probably about you know sixty percent of them did not show up, but they were interested because they registered. Okay, so I'm going to take that as a positive. And of those four hundred and seventy-seven, three hundred of them were not on our regular mailing list. So I'll put them on our regular mailing list. So get them. But you know what? You get you get emails constantly where you yeah, it's not a it's not something I have to do, and you just delete it. So how do we you know how do we how do we reach out? How do, how do how do we engage people and Make sure we're sharing the information. The other thing is, um, people are doing some interesting things. And how do we get how do we get folks to motivated to? We're open source, right? To share their their code back to the the community. Now, I'm not saying it's not work for these folks to take the community, you know, con uh, contributions. But those are things that uh, there probably aren't answers today. But like, start to think about, um, you know, how we can do that. We're really connected to the folks at Pitt probably because of, of the work with ACT. So we're really connected to one site and that that um, partnership is like bears fruit constantly, but there's other groups that are doing great things too. So how do we, you know, and there's groups in Europe that are doing like fantastic things too that we're not, you know, hearing about. So think think about that, you know, certainly let me know um, if there's something I can do to, to pull people together. Um, Zach, you asked a ton of questions. I think you probably have ideas. I'm going to tap you every yeah, once in a while. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you have so the answer. One thought that came to mind was um, if you make a really hard commitment to very few like, things out, like people might be willing to share their phone and then you send the text, because that's the surefire way to get through. And if you're very, very selective and like, I'm only going to send one text a year or something. You know, you could have one message that has maybe a couple links in it, and this is when the next uh, consortium is or something. I would be down at least. So, so you're you're going to add your phone number to the list? <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to add it, yeah. That's, yeah. I don't know. If that's a thing that takes off. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> We have no idea about. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so um, people already are familiar that I, what, that 1.8.0 is out. You know, has been out for some time, and now you have the new version. I would probably maybe do like a call to action, tie uh, the new web client like announcement out to say that you know these modifications that you've done need to be upgraded. You know, they no longer work in the new web client. Um, we're kind of going through that exercise right now with one of our internal web clients. And so if you kind of tie it together, give people like a heads up, hey, the cool things we're doing, maybe have let's have a discussion of the new, in the new web client, maybe you can start curating a list of uh, modifications and new, new things that are, that are done. Yeah, which, which I think I think people just don't know. Yeah, and we, once they install like one dot eight dot one, it, it's a big wake up call that everything is just gone. Right, right, and and it it might you know stop people from installing one dot eight dot one because they you know all of these cool things that are yeah yeah, and I think the user interface working group, which we try to you know um, yeah. Sure. 
Yep. That's like, you know, they're directing their staff to do one, one thing or another. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, I think maybe the push needs to give some thought to how do you convince people to, you know, at the institutional level or at the informatics or NCATS or that level of PI that this is something worthwhile. This is going to help um, your investigators. This is going to cut costs in certain ways um, without giving up all your power to Epic or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably where you need to push because, you know, us little people, we just do what we're told. So. It's true. I mean, it, how are we going to do that? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, talking about how we can do that, perhaps, uh, one of the concepts is with this new web client, they have the kind of the need to upgrade their plugins and their modifications, as uh, Niche had mentioned. Uh, we could do something along the lines of uh, a hackathon or an implementation thon. Uh, where in the fall or uh, in the spring or something like that, we're uh, bringing together uh, space and like inviting people to come, uh, bring their development team or bring key members of the development teams uh, at their local institutions. And then at that point, have uh, the core I2B2 members who are familiar with uh, all the plugin architecture, the the plugin implementation that have a lot of different skills and basically just be roaming around helping these groups uh, with their individual issues that they may be having or difficulties that they may be having or uh, providing uh, basically some consulting on, on exactly how you're going to uh, approach transforming one legacy plugin into a modern uh, plugin style. So that could be something. You think we could do that virtually, Nick? Because, you know, travel budgets have all been cut, so it's hard for people to, so we, we should, but let's, let's, let's carry that thread. I think that's a good idea. Um, I think the other thing is, I mean, just like Sean said for the documentation, but I think the other thing is we probably really have to figure out how to package these things so they're not hard to install. Like that they're like, doop, doop you're in because that's where you get the pushback from the staff level people because it takes a bit of effort and it's not sometimes not the easiest. I've worked with a lot of sites to install it and it, it can be tough and the error messages can be very vague and that's where the, you have the staff saying, I don't want to do this because it's, it's hard. So if there's a way to you know, maybe in the Committee on Technology, figure out all the ways to extract the pieces where they have to edit and, you know, kind of like what's in the admin new thing. But the only problem with that admin tool is you have to already be in I2B2 to use it. But maybe there's a way to extract that type of functionality where it's very easy to access where then the um, installation process is very simple from that point on. But right now it's tough, right? Everything, it's hard to install an ontology, it's hard to install the software. Um, I think Shrine is probably the easiest at this point, which it used to be the worst, right? Like they used to, we used to hate to install it, but now it's the simplest. So I think the more we move into that direction, that'll also be very helpful because then the staff won't say, well, this is gonna take me so much time. Anyone else I can chase down with the mic? Any last? I know it's like five o'clock and everybody's saying, okay, we're done. <laughs> One question: Do you, How's the June time frame? We we were ha we had these in September. Um, yeah, got a couple thumbs up. September seems to there was a few other like things that happened in September. I think June is well, June is good. The people who can't come in June aren't here to. Uh, I know. I know. So well, it, it'll be in the survey. Fill <laughs> out the survey. I, know, I hate surveys more than anything in the world. 
Fill out the survey. Let us know. All right, everyone. Thank you.